Greetings, this is Dr. Jeffrey Scott, and this is my weekend market update for Sunday, 5-15-2022. I titled today, Dead Cat Bounce or Something More. As always, this is for educational purposes only. Any specific stocks or markets I mention should not be considered a buy or sell recommendation, but rather should be considered in the spirit of education and not investment advice. I am a doctor, not a broker. I have none of the licenses that would suggest that I should be helping you trade. The tools demonstrated are those that I use in my daily trading. I have paid for all the tools that I will be demonstrating and trading involves risk. You and you are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. As part of the education that I do provide, and this is something that I provide at no cost, just like these videos, I have started a site called stocksanddocs.com and I post videos now typically I record them either late at night or early the next morning and I send it to a third party that posts them part of the wealth charts family so I don't control the time they're posted but usually if I do my job they're up by the time the market opens they are five minutes seven minutes max and I give a comment about the market and what I'm looking at so it's something you might want to check out. And again, there is no cost to that. Let's take a look at what I see in the markets right now. The first thing is, if you look over the five-day column, the only green was dollar, VIX, and bonds. That is not the ingredients for a strong stock market over the five days. Look at Bitcoin down 21%. Now, the remarkable thing is look at the one day return. Now, if I had a return from say 2.30, 3 o'clock on Thursday to Friday, it would be even higher as the markets started to rebound late in the day Thursday. Now, looking at these, it's very exciting. 11.8% return on Friday on ARK Innovation ETF. So the question is, was this just a bottom fishing, um, dead cat bounce bear market rally or is this the beginning of something more um, the other thing I want to show you notice how on most of the things here we are one day off the 52 week low what that means is there was an intraday low during Thursday on most of the major indexes and then a recovery um, on Friday pretty brisk recovery when you see especially on the indexes here and an ARC Innovation, 24% off the low. If we look at sectors, the only sector up over five days was consumer staples. Um, but if you look at the one-day bounce, discretionary technology and energy were back. So big day on Friday and late Thursday. But what does it mean? If we look at the market, um, you know, last week, I showed you a lot of red here as sectors advanced decliners, industry advanced decliners, and stock advanced decliners. Now it's extremely bullish. Yet 76% of the stocks are still in a downtrend and trading below the midline of their Bollinger Band using the S&P 1500. The number of stocks beneath the Bollinger Bands, gone. They've moved into the Bollinger Bands. That's what you expect. And you could see, here's where we were um, a month ago and even last weekend we had a large number of stocks that were um, going down sectors industry groups and stocks so we've seen ourselves a bit of a bounce here the warehouse report where I look at all the stocks in the um, in the universe not just the S&P 1500 and look at how they may have moved based upon certain factors and one could see um, on the week, you were down regardless of your EPS rank. Relative strength ranks seemed to benefit if the higher relative strength ranks did well. Um, and you could see certainly a curve here, but as you got to the higher relative strengths, maybe it mitigated. Remember, the head and the tail have so few stocks, I don't even look at them. On the NASDAQ, the big news here is that we had a Eureka, which is a bullish day now I want to see a second one in a short period of time um, we had a couple of bingos which are baby out with the bathwater signals and notice the number of new lows just disappeared not much in the way of buying in new highs but perhaps the selling at least for the day abated 
NYSE a similar story. No Hindenburg. A ba one bingo on Thursday, on Wednesday rather, and on Friday a Eureka, which is a bullish development. Got to see more. Not a follow through day, but could be the sign of something good to come. And similar to the Nasdaq, sort of an absence of sellers as the new lows disappeared. The buckets again, three quarters of the stocks below the midline of the Bollinger Bands. Very few stocks now are trading below them. Energy markets, if you wonder why the dry shippers are going up, it's because of the Baltic Dry Index. Um, it is available, the BDI on TradingView. Um, and you could see that the Baltic Dry Index um, has run up over the last few days. And if we look at energy for the week that was, you could see that natural gas was down quite a bit, 5%, uranium down 7.77. UK gas up, TTF gas in euros down. Um, other than that, a pretty flat week compared to where we've been. On the metals on the weekly, negative across the board, led by minus 8.46 on iron ore, 5.59 on silver. Um, perhaps we're getting near support on gold. Interest rates, always something we want to look at, and you, you can't see it very well. But the green arrow shows where they ended. The 10 and the 30 actually came back some this week. These are weekly charts. That's great. This is a little bit bothersome. The credit spread, sort of the measurement from the Fred um, of what is the, the challenges of difficulty of getting money, moved up a little bit this week. But it's nowhere near what it was in March 20. Here's the the yield curve overbought oversold stocks above the 200 stocks above the 40 both drop and they're certainly they're not in rarefied air where they have to bounce but they're in bounce range and if we look at the 13 week new high new low ignore the daily box for a second the weekly one clearly reversed and you could see even on the da the daily we got down to a level not seen for the last several months. So we got down to reversal. So a lot here telling me that there was at least an oversold bounce. When I looked at the news this week, um, considering the last couple of weeks of the monthly unemployment report, the CPI, the PPI, we've got some important things here. We've got sales, capacity, some real estate numbers, Jobless on Thursday the 19th, but really a lot lighter news than we've seen the last couple of weeks. Earnings, um, you could stop it here and see if any of your stocks are having earnings. It's important to know when your stock's earnings are, um, and you can make your own decision what to do. I thought the expected move charts were interesting, because if you look at the, certainly the E-mini futures, the NASDAQ futures, and the Russell futures, they all broke really hard down below the lower limit of their expected move. And remember, this is buying a straddle at the money on whatever instrument. You're buying the call, you're buying the put, um, or in the case of the money makers, you're selling the call and the put. And as long as the stock ends in between the green and the red, the market maker makes money. So on Thursday, the market was way below where it was supposed to finish and it rapidly increased gave a big bottoming tail on thursday and an up day on friday now that was the same on the nasdaq and the russell um, we did not get back within the expected move on the dow futures so what are my thoughts on the market we sold off hard until late thursday then a brisk rally another week earnings on tap last week if you missed your earnings like Roblox, you actually got rewarded because they weren't as bad as what thought they thought it could be. Um, ebb and flow of war and peace process will continue to whipsaw the market. Powell admitted the Fed started too late and kept multiple 50 basis point rates on the table. The PPI this week was hot but failed to deter the weekend rally. Despite the rally, I looked at probably 1,200 charts on Friday night and Saturday morning. There were very few good setups in the market. The most common thing you saw were stocks that were falling knives that had a little bit of momentum and an up move on Friday. 
So going into the week, the biggest question will be whether this is just another dead cat bounce like we had in early March or the beginning of a rally into new highs. There have been a remarkable number of people on YouTube and other sources that said the bottom is in. I'm not sure. So for me to believe it's more than just a bounce, here's what I need to see. I need to see what O'Neill refers to as a follow through day. So in the next three to five days, I need to see a up move of more than 1% on more value than, volume than the prior day. In Ian Woodward language, a eureka, which is another mathematical signal. The major indices have, had, have to have a higher high and higher low and ultimately have to get up and take out their descending moving averages. That's not going to happen right away. It wouldn't surprise me to see us move up a couple days, pull back, and then the question is, do we stop with a higher low and start moving back up again? That would be great. And then I've got to see breakouts actually start working before I want to commit fresh money. So right now, this is a dead cat bounce, but dead cat bounces can be quite ferocious. So let's just take a quick look at the markets to start. Spider Daily, you could see what happened Thursday. We had a, a positive candle, meaning it finished higher on Thursday than it opened, but it was still down on the day. But this was a really big recovery. It got almost down to, let's see what the low is here. The low was 385.15. Let's see. Nope, this day. You know, about five bucks above that 30, the 380 level or 3800 level on the S&P. Very bullish looking move. Now, what's the downside? You got a lot of people in here that are waiting to, to sell stuff that they went long in. And you've got so much overhead supply that's going to really slow us down. And, you know, think about it for us to really prove that there's a that it's different this time and that we should be bullish, we probably are going to have to, let's see if I can get the right trend line in here. I mean, we're going to have to get above that line at the minimum. And then, you know, you can make a lot of trend lines here and I certainly don't want to, spend the whole day doing that but for example what about off of this one down through here so you notice we had a trend line then we took a steeper drop so we've got a lot of resistance to go through when we look at the monthly um went down and pretty much touched our target so this would be a great place to bounce but let's see if we get follow through and where we end up I'm not going to spend much time, but the others will look very similar. The dollar gave back something on Friday as interest rates came down, and that might be something that we want to look to to continue. The VIX not giving us any signals. We did have 90% down volume and huge volume, I think on Thursday, maybe on Wednesday as well. So maybe we're getting close. Now, if you think this is over, just look at the guppy charts. We are so far below the moving average complex that we were due an oversold bounce to get us back towards the moving averages. But we have a long ways to go and a lot of repair before we start talking about uptrends and new highs. Commodities, gold and silver have just both broken down. Oil bounced off the 50, wants to go higher. Gas sort of going sideways here but with really significantly big intraday moves. 10-year came off. It actually gapped up some on Friday, which did not deter the market. So we'll see what's going to happen there. Market theme continues to be large caps and value and control. And if we look at the sectors in the S&P over one hour versus the spiders, Energy comes to the top and probably staples. Healthcare gave up some, as did industrials and materials, but they're probably the next tier. If we go into the dashboard and we start with, um, curious, the heap, well, the contra ETFs, no surprise, would be all red on the day. And this is a standard feature I really like in uh, wealth charts. 
and you could see in the S&P 500, there was not a whole lot of red. Comcast, I don't know the story there, but Pfizer, J&J, &J, Merck, Bristol Myers Squibb, all somewhat more defensive stocks that have held up better. So maybe on a day that the junk off the bottom rebounded, those two gave up, those gave up a bit. And Twitter is, seems to be dependent upon the tweets of Elon Musk and the status of what he's doing. If we go into Sector Scanner, and let's just go back to the top, and let's look at one more. Here we go. Let's look at changes. Everything was up on Friday, led by, no wonder Kathy would do, did well, technology, healthcare, consumer cyclical. All of these were up. So it would be nice to find something that is not just a dead cat bounce in these, I'm not sure we will. If we hit compare, and we now we can look at the top bunch, drug manufacturers, solars, diagnostics, software, semi, software, data storage, internet, gaming, health, healthcare, and let's include biotech. And so we took the top two, healthcare and technology. Let's compare them. I skip things that have 800% returns because they're t typically really cheap, but we can just, since I'll filter them later, let's just take everything up more than 5% on the day. So these are all the stocks that were big movers in the leading groups. Wow, there's a lot of them, aren't there? Yeah, it was a great day. I mean, it's, I'm not going to poo-poo that it was a great day. Shift. And then let's add these to the watch list and let's just put them in my weekend bulls. Okay, we wanted to see this in the upper right hand corner, showing that the symbols were added to the watch list. If I go into Wealth Scanner and I look at the top down, there's been a little change here. The dollar strength has now passed and the bonds have moved up while natural gas moved to third, gasoline, so think refiners, oil, commodities, energy, exploration, services, staples, high dividend stocks. That, those couple have moved up, but the big numbers here are still on the commodities. Let's go in the CAT scanner and let's start with the weekend review and see if anything in the weekend review looks interesting. So let's go in and let's look at these for bullish dots, my five and 500,000. That's all we're going to have. And then let's filter or rank by dots. And let's take a look at some of these. This is um, Dynavax. And this was one that I thought was intriguing. But let's use this as an example why this market, this is what they all, a lot of them look like. So here's a stock that we'd all agree is in a pretty horrific downtrend. In fact, its high jump bar was getting down to maximum low and it had a green candle low bounce on Thursday. Massive volume on Friday, accompanied by a breakout and momentum and a PSER reversal. Now, in an uptrend, this stock would be awesome my problem is think of all these people here that might want to sell it and all of the potential resistance on the way up. This was a common pattern. IMMR, immersion. Immersion, similar in some ways. You got four dots, including a gap. And it's got an EMS signal. And the only thing that I don't like about this is relatively inexpensive stock is it's got to get above that 200. MSI, Motorola Solutions, an earnings move. Same story, big move, but way down in the pattern. I want to find things that are actually buyable right here. Now, I don't know who Veru is, but the chart looks somewhat interesting. It did nothing for a long time. And then something must have happened, whether it was earnings or some other news that you had broke out, pulled back to the moving averages, and had a gap up and a breakout here. The reason why not four dots is it's off the high on the on the after the gap up. Okay, Altimune is another one that I saw that looked interesting. But again, 
these are not uptrends. These are we're now looking at buying things that are falling knives and falling knives can cut you pretty bad. But, you know, if this market does continue to rally, some of these could be potentially new leaders. But these things are just beat up, even though they've got a lot of positive signals. BLDR is another one. Again, looks a little bit better because it closed right up at the 50, a three dot breakout here as well. More of an uptrend with a pretty steep pullback. Um, none of these are the biotech stocks that we just pulled over here. Um, anything else? Hershey is an example of a really good looking stock from a chart pattern pays a dividend probably in the 3% range, but check it yourself. But is this the type of stock that a growth stock investor wants to be trading? Notice that it's come back off the highs in a flag. It did have momentum volume and a breakout here. And theoretically, I guess it would be safe and reasonable to draw a trend line in here and a break above that trend line might not be a bad place to be looking at picking up some Hershey. But again, if you look at PE multiple, it's probably relatively expensive. Micron is one that I started trading this week, but I started trading it because I know the name. It's got great earnings, but to be fair and honest, it's another falling knife. So yes, there's stocks here that are attractive, but there are a lot of falling knives that will have a lot of resistance to the upside. Now, I have my list of my favorite scans, and it's got a, a twist towards high growth stocks, and it comes from scans from multiple programs, and I call it my combo leaders list. And DVAX and IMMR were in it, Hershey, Micron, SFL Corporation. Now this is in the dry bulk space, but why do I like this? This is probably one of the best charts out there. It's clearly on my buy watch, is you've got a fresh breakout to new highs with big volume, momentum, and a breakout. Now, the kind of chart I like to look at. So that stock looks kind of interesting. Um, anything else down here that came up to me during my review that I thought was interesting. What about something like AMD? I'm going to compare AMD to AVGO. AMD is down from 160s, traded as low as the low 80s. And it had a couple of really good days out of a squeeze. But look at all the overhead supply and resistance it's going to have to get through. AVGO is at least starting to trade sideways and a break above that 50 day moving average would be interesting and it had momentum and a breakout. One stock that I own is CF. I've talked about this in the past and this is doing what one of the stocks we looked at earlier was where I talked about you know we're breaking through And it kind of broke through this on Friday, but it's got to close above that line. And it had breakout and momentum. So there are stocks here that look interesting. CYTK is one that we talked about weeks ago. Sort of in a Darvis box, you buy it off the 200, you sell it when it gets back up to here. It would have to break out here and sustain it for me to get interested. If I go into, for example, all stocks, do anything else pop up? Hershey, Lamb Research, again, another bottom fishing technology stock. VIPS, a Chinese e-commerce play, is it getting ready to do something? It had three dots on Friday. Um, but it's still got to get above the 200. 
And then just to finish with, these are some of the stocks that I looked at um, this weekend that I put on my short list to see what the market's going to do. And let's look for the weekend. Buy watch. All right. Let's go watch list, buy watch list. And these were some of the stocks. Let me see if there's anything that I want to pull up that we haven't seen. One that I was talking about a lot on my morning videos is VTNR, Vertex Energy. And this was one that I drew a break, a, a cup and candle breakout over here. It's traded up. Now you'll notice that the high jumps at 100. That might be a little bit bothersome. Um, another big leader that pulled back is this Lanthus, Lanthius. Um, breaking out from a descending trend line here, one to watch. Another of the dry bulk shippers is Golden Ocean, which broke out on Friday, as did others. Star Bulk had a great day. Here's STNG, Scorpion Tankers, another of the shippers. And then within the refiner space, the VTNT was one that I liked. And there's some energy stocks here as well on semiconductor. Again, I bought some of this and I'd like to see it get above the 50 coming out of a squeeze. It wasn't a big uptrend. But unfortunately, a lot of the stocks that you're going to see are going to look like this. And that is, boy, the stock has really sold off hard. And now I'm looking at it again. Why? This is Turning Point Therapeutics. They have a number of breakthrough medications in oncology. We're going into the oncology meetings. A lot of these companies will start to move. And frankly, if you look at LABU, and in the same token, is this a dead cat bounce or something more? Um, LABU, is that a bottom and a move up? Doesn't look like much, does it? If you look up here, uh, I'm not showing you the, uh, I am. Let me just make this bigger. And let's just highlight this day here. That was a 16% move in LABU on Friday. So biotech looks like it's moving. On that note, I am going to stop here. Um, there weren't a whole lot of shorts, great short up setups. And frankly, there's not a lot of great long setups. Um, you know, leaders will be stocks like Devon that continue to move higher, but are they too far gone? And most of what I'm seeing are stocks like the immersion that look interesting with a big gap up here, but are way down in their pattern. Have a great week. Be careful. Figure out for yourself what's it going to take to convince you about the difference between a dead cat bounce and a new bull run. I expect this to be a dead cat bounce. I'll play accordingly, which means I've nibbled. I'm not going to go all in. If I miss the beginning of the next rally, so be it. And I'm going to look for failure at some resistance as a new place to enter some contra ETFs. Have a great week.